Hey everyone, geophysicist Stefan Burns here with an update as to what is happening volcanically in Ethiopia because since mid-September of last year, there has been a tremendous upsurge in earthquake activity in and around Fontali and Dauphin volcanoes very close to the capital city of Addis Ababa. And since 2025 has started, this has increased even more with a flurry of magnitude 5 and greater earthquakes. There has been a tremendous amount of vertical ground displacement here in between these volcanoes along a dike that is forming and it looks like a volcanic eruption is imminent, though we don't know exactly when that is going to occur. But we've seen activity like this before in other parts of the globe like Iceland and also along Gockel Ridge. And so today we are going to examine just what's been happening recently. We had a magnitude 5.7 earthquake on the 4th of January. Just today as I'm recording this on the 8th of January we had a magnitude 5.3 showing that things are still very live and active here at Fontali and Dauphin volcanoes. And we will also examine the broader geologic context as to what is driving this volcanic activity because this energy is coming straight from the core. Let us begin with our USGS earthquake map and examine also the broader setting that all this activity is taking place in. Here we have the continent of Africa, here is the Indian Ocean, here is the Horn of Africa. The Horn of Africa is breaking off from the mainland continent, spreading at about 5 millimeters per year, creating the East Africa Rift Zone. And the reason why there is this spreading in the first place is because there is a massive super plume underneath this part of Africa causing this geologic unrest. Geologists suspect in millions of years that the Horn of Africa will become its own island or subunit and there will be an ocean in between them just like the Red Sea right here which also has a rifting zone there as well. So this area is very tectonically active and we see all the earthquakes that are occurring in this zone here, I drew a box over them and selected all the earthquakes going from year 2000 to today. Here at the top, we have the northern part of the East African Rift System. Here the crust is a little bit thinner, and so you have more oceanic rifting already, even though the ocean hasn't flowed in yet. And then if you go further south to Kenya, Tasmania, Mozambique, you still have continental rifting because the crust is thicker though eventually that should thin and become more of an oceanic type of a rifting system. So let's punch in even further here. And I first want to show you, we have Fontali volcano there and Dauphin volcano there. We see all these earthquakes clustered in between the two. And if I zoom out one more time, we see that from the year 2000, there's been a flurry of earthquakes, but almost all of them have been since 2024, specifically September. So here we have this magnitude 4.5, that was in 2009 right there. Another earthquake in 2009, magnitude 5 up top. And then a magnitude 4.5 in the year 2020. So only three earthquakes in the first 20 years. And then starting late September 2024, all the rest of these earthquakes started to pile up. And they've all been at greater than magnitude 4.5 because the global earthquake network really only picks up earthquakes of sufficient strength and that typically is magnitude 4.5 or greater showing that undoubtedly there's been a whole bunch of earthquakes magnitude 4.5 and less but you need the local seismic station to pick that up and so this is a tremendous amount of earthquake activity that's been occurring in Ethiopia right next to the capital city of Addis Ababa and that has a lot of people worried. They've been feeling these earthquakes now in the capital city. And if we go to uh, our largest magnitude, we see that there was a magnitude 5.7 earthquake on January 4th right here near Dauphin Volcano. And just today we had a magnitude 5.3 right there. So this area is still very, very active. And this isn't uh, a typical earthquake swarm, which is caused by one strong earthquake, let's say like a magnitude seven, and then you get a whole bunch of aftershocks. This is all caused by volcanic intrusions occurring underground. So you have the flow of magma actually breaking the rock up, flowing along fracture lines, splitting things apart, and then getting closer and closer to the surface. And this is all being driven by that African super plume. Why is the African continent breaking apart in two at the Horn of Africa in the first place? 
While there is a massive plume of low density material from the deep earth rising upwards under Ethiopia, creating the Rift Valley and eventually an oceanic spreading center. As the plume rises, it decompresses causing partial melting and volcanism. The helium ratio from the African superplume is very high, indicating a deep mantle or even core mantle origin. And here we have some seismic data showing the location of that African superplume. Specifically, we are looking at the velocity of the compressional P wave. And so we see that these blue colors here, purple colors there are fast, high velocity P waves. And then if you go into the red territory, it is a slower P wave. The actual compressional seismic wave, sound wave, traveling through that rock is slower uh, versus higher. So we see that Africa in general is fairly homogeneous. We do have this higher velocity P wave regime here along the Cape, but you all of a sudden go to Ethiopia and it goes way, way, way down. That is the location of that African super plume. Effectively, you have that material rising up from depth and P wave velocities move through it slower because it is of a lower density and a higher temperature. We see that it actually originates more down here, but it's expressed with that uh, lower P wave velocity at depth. And then it rises up to the surface under East Africa, really under Ethiopia and also near Arabia under the Red Sea as well. So this is a very active area geologically because of this African super plume. Ethiopia is a very special place geologically because it is one of the few places on the planet where you have energy rising up from the deepest parts of the earth, whether this is the deep mantle or perhaps even further down at the core mantle boundary. And evidence for this comes in the helium isotope ratio. You have helium three, you have helium four, and they have this normal ratio in the atmosphere that doesn't really change much. But if all of a sudden helium three gets elevated, then you know that you have a different source of helium that you're measuring. And what we can do is we take these rock samples, you can grind them up, and then you can measure that helium isotope ratio. If helium three is super elevated, that's indicative of this coming from a source deep in the earth. The further down you go, the more helium three there is. And the reason we think that is there's two main ideas. Either A, helium-3 was sequestered in the deep earth and formed a helium-3 reservoir during the accretion of the planet, or there is an active georeactor at the center of our planet producing helium-3 as a light element due to nuclear fission that's occurring. So they both perhaps could be right, but regardless, we see at the, uh, the deepest uh, mantle plumes like Hawaii and Iceland and also Ethiopia, the helium-3 ratio goes way, way, way up. And so that is what we have here. We have these different values. The one on the left there is the, uh, the highest helium three to helium four ratio as compared to the normal atmospheric ratio. You'll see Red Sea and Afar has a lot of samples that had that highest ratio. That's nine to 19 times greater than the normal helium three isotope atmospheric ratio. And then you have the other two categories here being eight to one or six to 0 0.9. So they're also elevated over. So those are those three categories right there. We see a greatly elevated plume-like helium isotope ratio there, Red Sea and Far, 64 samples, nine samples there, 15 for the main Ethiopian rift. All these indicating that very deep origin of that mantle plume coming up. And that is spreading this whole area apart, causing that Horn of Africa to rift off. And this is also indicative that what is happening here is driven by dynamics happening at the deepest parts of our planet, whether in the deep mantle or perhaps even the core mantle boundary. Here we see a graphic showing the movement of helium from the outer core into the lower mantle, then how that then creates this plume. Uh, so we have this migration of helium. Remember, helium is a very, very, very light element. It's the second least dense element, only behind hydrogen, and it's a noble gas. It's not that reactive. And so it's going to want to move out of a high density area to an area of lower density, right? You fill up a balloon with helium, even though the atmosphere is very low density, it will fly right up. And so of course, helium is going to want to escape from these areas of extremely high pressure and density, 
And that could be one of the reasons why there is this overall convective flow of material from the deepest parts of the planet because we have such abundant helium-3 down there and other light elements as well. But regardless, we know that there is a plume under Ethiopia and that has a very deep origin because of its elevated helium-3 to helium-4 ratio. And it's one of the seven main deep mantle plumes that's been identified on Earth. The others would be Hawaii, Iceland, the Louisville plume. We also have the Reunion hotspot, the Tristan hotspot, and also the Easter hotspot. That'd be Easter Island. Those are the only locations that have enough evidence to point to them having that mantle plume come from the deepest parts of the Earth. And so these deep mantle plumes are some of the most active in general and they are indicative of the activity that's happening deep, deep, deep within the planet. And it looks like something's gonna be happening volcanically in Ethiopia in any moment because there's been a tremendous amount of displacement of the ground surface just in the past few weeks. Here we have some satellite data showing the recent uplift that's been occurring in between Fontali and Dauphin volcanoes. This goes from December 17th to the 19th and effectively there is a satellite that's measuring the change in distance between itself and the ground surface. So we have these different contour intervals here and overall if you count them up you get about 40 centimeters of uplift in this zone, this dike there. So it's this very narrow linear feature that's very clearly running in between Fontali and Dauphin volcanoes. This is uplifting 0.4 meters indicating that there's something that's probably about to erupt out soon this could stall out and just kind of settle out the way it is right now, but that seems unlikely with all the hydrothermal activity that's been occurring, these mud geyser explosions and more. If this does continue to push upwards and these magma intrusions get closer and closer to the surface, we can expect this uplift to continue well into 2025. This only goes from the 17th to the 29th of December, and then eventually it could rift apart and actually have a rift eruption along that entire length in time. Let's go back to Google Earth to specifically look at Fontali and Dauphin volcanoes. Here we have Fontali volcano, and you'll notice that's quite large. It is a stratovolcano, and it's had rhyolitic and also basaltic eruptions in the past. So it's a bimodal volcano. It could either have a big explosion or can have more of an effusive type eruption like you see in Hawaii. This is the biggest volcano in this zone. You'll see that's quite a bit larger than Dauphin. If we keep zooming over here, we see Dauphin volcano. It's not nearly as tall, but there is some volcanic topographic features to it, but it really doesn't have any known eruptions in modern history. Uh, we know that there's been volcanic activity there because that's the scene geologically, but there's no uh, known recorded accounts of it, whereas Fentali volcano is recorded to erupt in 1820 and also back in the 13th century. And Dauphin volcano is a shield volcano. So it has more of that effusive type of eruption, whereas Fentali here being a stratovolcano could have a big sort of explosion type event. That is possible. We see that with that caldera there very nicely. Now this red line, is this uh, line basically just drawn between the two where we're having that uh, uplift occurring 40 centimeters for the second half of December. And if there is some sort of rip that opens up, it looks that likely it's going to occur roughly in this zone here. This is the area that's been basically evacuated as far as I know. I'm sure there's still some people there, but it's getting quite hazardous there with all these different hydrothermal eruptions that are occurring clearly showing that this magma is getting close enough to the surface to cause groundwater to start to bubble up and get really energetic and heated. And so if this entire rift opens up, this would be a massive volcanic feature. What's happening in Iceland is not nearly as long. It's only a few kilometers long. This is 40 kilometers long. This could be a huge volcanic event, one of the biggest of the 21st century, if not the largest. That's it for today's video on the earthquake and volcanic situation in Ethiopia. Again, I've been your host, Stefan Burns. I will keep you up to date with what is happening there to the best of my ability. So please subscribe to stay in the loop. I also on this channel cover things like space weather and solar activity and other earth geophysical processes that are unfolding on this planet at this moment in time. 
So if you'd like to stay appraised in general as to what is happening here on Earth, then please subscribe to the channel. Thank you all so much for watching. Wishing you all well. Wishing everyone in Ethiopia well. Please pray for everyone there that's been affected by this. Hopefully we don't get a massive volcanic rift eruption, but that does seem to be the most likely outcome. So we just hope that's not the case. And again, I'll keep you up to date every step of the way.